All right, so let's go over how we can add sound to our game. You might be able to hear that I've got a little bit of music playing in the background. When I jump, the character makes a little squeaky boom sound. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. So let's talk about how that's done and the different kinds of sounds that you're going to be able to use in your game. So we'll go back to our level 5, where if you've watched the previous video, we just added parallax scrolling to create a more engaging feeling to the background here. Now, there are two different kinds of sounds in Gato. There are streams and there are samples. And they can use uh, a couple of open source, or rather free, compression formats, but samples um, should be very short, and Gato has a tool for importing them and trimming off the space at the end and really minimizing how much memory they take to store. And you don't have to worry about a lot about how that's done. Um, the bundle that I've got, that I've sent out to all of you, uh, already includes a couple of sound files that have been optimized for this next thing. But to begin with, we're going to um, add a streaming node. So streams um, use things that are much bigger. So you, they use OGG files, OGG, which is similar to MP3, but it is free. and um, so they use that to store s entire songs and so you can store v very long audio clips you wouldn't want to store that entire thing in memory necessarily but you want to be able to read through the file and play it as you go and then loop back to the beginning typically with a stream you're only going to have one of those playing at a time whereas samples you might have dozens or even hundreds of them playing although that could be very annoying so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a streaming player to this level so go ahead and select the node 2D, click the plus, and then start typing stream. All right, so we should now see stream player. So we'll select that, say create. We now have a stream player added. Now the first thing you notice is that there's nothing in the stream. So go over to your search and type game. And I have already converted a song to aug. That can be done using Audacity if you'd like, or if you want to, uh, sometimes a faster or simpler way is to use something called FFmpeg, which you can search, and there are lots of tutorials on that. If, if anybody uh, would like, you can ask me in the comments or in class, and I can make another video on how you can use FFmpeg to prepare sounds for use with Gado, but uh, I've already prepared this one. So gamesong.ogg, and just drag that over here into the stream. And now that's already set, and it's almost ready to go. So really all you got to do is now select loop, and select autoplay. So now when I press play on this, it starts playing my song. So adding a background to the song to your level is that easy. Alright, let's talk about how we add a sample now. So the sample, notice it happens when the player jumps. So that means it's controlled by the player. So let's go ahead and uh, load up our player character adventure scene here and you'll notice I'm going to also pull up the script for it all right so we've got that and I'm going to go back to 2D mode all right, so we're looking at our character here and there's a sample player 2D so I've added sample player 2D and once you've done that then you look down here and it says samples and when you initially get this it's going to be it's going to say null there and you can select new sample library Doing so, we'll then pull up this view, and so then all you have to do is find the audio file that I have added. Now, you notice there's two over here. One is a .smp, that's a sample, so it's already been kind of optimized for use within Godot, and the Godot uh, import engine has done that for me. It happened when I dragged this wave that I created into here. Now, you may notice how See this strange looking shape that shows up in the black square? All right, so that's called a waveform and it's showing you visually what this sound would look like. So notice how this one has a black empty space in the beginning. That tells me that this wasn't optimized. There's a delay in the beginning and you can see that in my preview here. There's emptiness before and after. So I actually don't want that. So I would rather use this one. So I'm actually going to delete this, but keep in mind uh, this jump name because that's going to be important. I'll show you how to trigger that in a second. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go ahead and drag this sample in. And if I press play, I can hear it. All right, so I'm going to rename it to jump just like before. 
So this sample library works very similarly to the way that the animated sprite um, sprite frames works. So if we look at here, we've got frames, and we click this little arrow, and now I've got this list of animations. If we click on the sample library, and we click the arrow, we have a list of samples. So it works very similarly. So let's go back into the script here. And so where we need to go within our script is right down here in jump. So if you want to go down to line 91 in the script that came in the example here. And you can see that um, I've got here if it is action press jump and you can jump, then go ahead and say you're jumping. That helps it decide if you can jump. But the thing that's important here is on line 93 where I get the node, sample player 2D, and I say play, jump. So do you remember that name that I showed you for the sample player? We called it jump with a capital J. All right, so that is how it knows which one to play. Now, if I had called it something else, then in this play call here, I'd have to change that name. That's really all there is to it. So now whenever this gets called, whenever I jump and I can jump, then it gets this sample player 2D to play that particular sample. If I had other samples added, perhaps I have an ouch sample or something, then I can add that and then whenever I get hurt, when the hurt function is called, you know, you, you get damaged here or something, then whenever I call this animation dot play hurt, I could easily say, you know, get node sample player 2D dot play hurt. Maybe I have a sample called that. So in that way you can <clears throat> bring your game world to life with different sounds that happen when different events get triggered. All right, so that's really all there is to it, to adding a sample player and a stream player to your level. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I look forward to hearing from you.